Hello, I'm Carrie Cordy. It is Thursday, January 11th, 2018. It's the morning time. I've had my coffee while still in the midst of drinking, and I drink it really slowly. So, guess what life has thrown my way? The delivery job that I've had that's been like once a week if that's you know not gonna go through because of you know slow issues with the truck but you know it'll be that one of the things I'll call if they need a driver that day kind of thing and it's raining so I can't get up to the ranch plus um, a couple of days ago my landlords gave me 60 day notice um, uh, tomorrow I'll be 200 and, or, I mean, uh, two full weeks behind on rent, that's $240. My rent has gone up, went up on the new year. Um, so yeah, I, my landlords are great, nice people, and, you know, I'm not angry with them, but... You know, they even offered to help tow my trailer since I have no way to do it myself um, within a reasonable distance. So, I have that to deal with. I applied at a few places. Um, I need to call one of them back because I've already had an interview there. I applied at another place that's a fishing industry like Ben and Pacific. Um, I really hope they hire me on. It's, it's another one of those sure kind of thing. But I'm still, I'm worried. I am worried. You know, my life really gets down to the line a lot like this. I've been through it so many times that I know I can deal with it. And, you know, if, if the worst comes, as hard as it will be, I know I can deal with it. And I'll need good people in my life. So, when things get down to the wire like this, you know, there's always something that happens. There's always something that happens. And it doesn't mean that I sit back and that I just wait for the miracle to happen, as to put it another way. And, you know, I'm not just doing nothing. But it doesn't mean that I'm not really, really hard on myself. You know, I'm very, very hard on myself. And I I am always striving to grow and, and do the things way outside my comfort zone. And I've addressed it in other videos, but it's it's really hard to put myself out there for a job um because the last couple of years since beginning my transition has gotten difficult and it's you know putting down a work history requires some explanations just because of the ways i've lost my job and my jobs and so i will be completely honest about these things i it's just i don't see the point otherwise and that means that there are employers out there that Unless they meet me, they kind of shy away from what it is on the surface. So I don't like to do the online applications. It's, you know, I just, I don't seem to get callbacks. Unless it's like one of those employment agencies. But now that's very difficult with my history. And, you know, if I can go into a place and, and, and talk to somebody and make an impression right away, you know, that, that's when it goes good, that's when I get the callbacks. And it's a shame that this world does a lot of the online applications where you just become a number. And, like, with somebody like me that's just completely honest on the resume and on the application, you know, it's it's a it's an acceptance of this world that, you know, everybody lies, you know, bends the truth a little bit. And so when somebody like me is being honest, that if I'm bending the truth, how bad am I from 
a perspective and I truly don't know if that's just you know paranoid thinking and and you know that people on the whole are, are much better than what I'm thinking yeah I'm willing to recognize that that possibility exists but you know I'm I don't think I'm completely wrong here and I, I do believe the problem is more widespread than it should be like uh, what the laws are when somebody's checking upon the work history. They're only legally allowed to ask what the dates of the um, the employment was and whether or not that they would hire this person back. And it is a regular practice to ask more questions than that and have the people answer these things. You know, that's the kind of stuff in this world that should be prosecuted. And it's not, you know, there are other priorities of the enforcement of laws. And there's various organizations to police the, the various other avenues of life that we have regulations. You know, like the meat inspection business, to, to name one. You know, human rights inspections by other organizations, to name another. And... Then there's the obvious law enforcement that we have on the the city, county, state, and federal levels. You know, I'd really like to have people see this. Leave leave a few comments on on what you think an avenue of life is that needs to be enforced. You know, I don't believe that there's any one thing that's going to fix the problems, but like what I'm saying here with these basic things on getting a job, I think those are really important in these times in this country. You know, there are way too many of us that are struggling, and it doesn't matter the the level of, of where we are. You know, I really relate to the very, very poor, you know, and that's where my life is but I do know people that are outside of my my financial station that you know from from my definition of such money and, and where to live and such things is what is completely different than theirs <clears throat> but I've had good enough jobs to where you know you you should have make a good living but the more money you make the the more it costs to live and it's really really hard to get outside of, of that you know it's you know twenty dollars is a, a lot of money and you know there are people out there to where you know two hundred doesn't mean much and it doesn't mean that you know their their stuff isn't tight it's a different it's, it's just a, a different way to live life and I can't sit here and say that, that everything needs to be taken away. Uh, there are those examples of just extreme wealth. And another thing of mine that, you know, one thing we could do for society is I think something like profiteering laws. You know, you're not allowed to charge this much percentage more than what this thing cost. You know, your, your top level person can't make uh, this much percentage more than the lowest paid employee and that would include contracted labor across the world so somebody like Apple which is famous for you know that contracted human slave labor thing you know those buildings that have suicide nets because it's so bad for the people there you know it was bad enough that they had to put nets around the building to keep their laborers you know there should only be a certain percentage that the very top people are allowed to earn and that would include any owned corporation by another corporation you know I don't think that's unreasonable to ask and people would just put all sorts of horrible labels on this to get an instant emotion emotional reaction you know these are the kind of things I'd kinda of like to see some comments you know even share if you think that there's somebody out there that that this kind of thing would click with. You know, I'm just really interested to listen to people here, and I like challenging my perspective. I don't know, I kind of want to get something going here. Let's... 
yeah, I think this is a very good subject. Hey, it's 10 minutes. It was a short one. <laughs>